Hey and welcome to this lesson on a Kenny Burrell's Great Blues Chitlins Con Carne. I'm going to show you the chords, you'll get the chord shapes, we'll show you a chart and I'll also break down some ways to begin soloing over this one. Now please check the description for a link to the resources from today's lesson. You'll also find there a link to my Patreon page where this month there is a Chitlins comping study, backing track, beginner's solo and intermediate solo. Let's get on to it. So Chitlins is a 12 bar blues in C. It has a real Latin feel to it with the instrumentation, with the percussion and the, the groove in the bass line. And here's my chart on the screen. Now, it's pretty much your basic blues in C. We've got four bars of C7 sharp nine on the uh, top line there, four bars of that. Going then to two bars of F9. You could play F7 here, I like F9. Back to the C7 sharp nine for two bars. And then we have G7, F9, to two bars of C7 sharp nine to finish. Now, if you listen to the recording on Midnight Blue, there's also an intro with the kind of, kind of groove of the bass and the percussion. I think that's eight bars. And, and the way they finish the tune, it does fade out, but they just repeat that last line, G7, F7 to C7. So in terms of chord shapes for this one, the main chord shape you're gonna be using is this C7 sharp nine. So it's a four string chord root on the A string and it's going root, third, flat seven and that all important sharp nine on the top. Now important thing there is that you mute the E string, the finger on the A string, the middle finger, allow that to rest against it. You'll probably find that the index finger can catch the, the high E. So you should have just four strings there and unless you're playing with the, your fingers, I would really try to mute those E strings. Then F9 or if you prefer, you can use F7. Again, trying to mute the strings either side. And then G7, this three note voicing. Now this is the preferred way that I like to play the tune. On the recording, Kenny really does go for this C7 sharp nine voicing here, which is beautiful, but it's not the easiest to fret. It's maybe not as easy as that one because it's all kind of compacted and it's very muddy. Um, I think that works really well on the recording, but I think in, you know, for, for practicing for most people, this is gonna sound a bit more balanced, possibly a bit easier to play. Uh, another place you can play that chord, by the way, just, this is just useful to know, is up here off the D string. If you're feeling adventurous, you could bring in the A string. And then if your thumb can reach over, you can even bring on the E. Which is uh, quite a challenging chord to do. So let me play those chords. I'll just play one strum pub bar for now so you can easily follow it. One, two, three, four. So C7 sharp nine, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Go to F9, four, one, two, three, four, for two bars. Back to C7 sharp nine for two bars. G7, one bar. F7, one bar. Or F9 as I play it. C7 sharp nine, two bars. We go again and that's a point of just uh, be careful there because if then you start again there's no G7 at the end there in the last bar of the form so you play two bars of C7 sharp 9 then it starts again and you got to play another four so there's actually six bars of C7 sharp 9 in a row there that's a place where someone could easily lose where they are if you're playing this with other people you'd often find that the bass player or the drummer or other instruments would really make a point of marking that it's the last bar and they're starting again just to avoid problems there where people might get lost, just stuck on C7 sharp nine and not sure when to change. Now in terms of how to play those chords, this isn't one way you want to sit and play swing rhythm, say like C jam blues, you don't want to sit there and go. It needs to be groovy, it needs to have that, that sort of Latin feel to it. And the thing I'd suggest you do is listen to how Kenny comps underneath the saxophone solo after the guitar solo. You could try and mimic some of that, but basically it's a lot of syncopation and obviously it's how the guitar then interplays with the percussion and the bass. On the accompanist tier of my Patreon page, there is a comping study for this. Here's a little snippet of that. You might need to start with just, you know, where I was like one, two, three, four, one, just to make sure you can get the chords in time and, and change between them and feel comfortable with them. And then as say, do some listening or check out my comping study and work towards doing something more interesting, more groovy, more syncopated. So on to soloing over this tune. Now the first thing I'd suggest you do is really give Kenny's solo a really good listen, good several lessons. 
listen out for the way he phrases, the rhythms he used, the way he leads into chords. If we broke down kind of the scales he's using, overall I think, you know, it's largely pentatonic and the minor blues with a couple extra notes in. And I'll break down what scales I would use. I think it's a song where you can get away with just using, you know, once picking a scale and, and phrasing over the chords with that. What you do have to do, however, is try to follow those chords. So knowing, you know, you've got, you can target the notes C, F and G as those chords change. And here's a breakdown of some scales that you could use. And how I would use them is I'd want to know where the root notes of our chords are, C, F and G, and to try and target those as the chords change. So typically sort of ending phrases. If it's a C chord, the C7 sharp 9, end your phrase on a C. Obviously there's more you can do with it over time. When the chord changes to F9 or G7, try to target those notes. So important to understand what you're playing. Uh, make sure you can say something with the scale in terms of phrase it and follow the chords. So the first scale I would start with is the C minor pentatonic. Know where the C's are. Got three in there, got two F's, got two G's. And obviously you could learn this in other places over the neck. A lot of Kenny's solo sort of sits around position one and position two of the minor pentatonic. Um, so that scale you can say plenty with, but I want to reiterate with that scale, with any of these next scales, you want to try and target the chords as they change. To so say if the chord was the C7 sharp 9, either it was just coming in or you're on that chord. You know, I think Kenny plays something like, finishing on a C, that quarter step bend on top. So it's very, finishes on the root note of the, the chord. There you go, finish on a C. These ideas are. And as a result, it's going to sound strong against that chord. Now imagine the next chord comes in, the F comes in. I'm going to target that F. The chord goes back to C. Then we're in G to F to C. And that I'm playing very simple ideas, I know, but just trying to illustrate that, you know, those ideas, they have a strong feel to them, strong sound, because they're following the chords. Now, a lot of Kenny's solo works around position one and position two of C minor pentatonic, but as I said, it really closely follows and targets the notes of the chord, particularly the root notes. Something like this in this solo I put together over on Patreon. The second scale though I would try is the blues scale, so just simply adding the flat 5, G flat, F sharp, to that scale. Really nice for getting into the F, you know, and targeting the F, you know, from above. That's a cool note to have. Just brings in a bit of tension. Here's an example of it in use in one of the solos I constructed. You may find the five note pentatonic, the the five note pentatonic, the six note hexatonic minor blues scale a bit limited and that you want a bit richer harmony. And I think if you listen to Kenny's solo, gradually he brings in a few more notes for a bit more harmonic interest. Um, I would start with the Dorian. This brings in this D the ninth which is a really nice sound um, we've also got the A which is an interesting sound too which happens to be the major third of the F7 F9 chord too here's some Dorian based kind of ideas Finally, the last scale I'd suggest using is C Mixolydian. This has a much brighter sound because it's got a major third rather than a minor third. And again, richer sounding. 
uh, because there's there's more notes, a bit more character to it. Here's a bit in one of the solos I put together where I bring out some of the mixed Lydian character. <laughs> could conceivably look at different scales for the F7 and the G7 but I think it's simpler first off picking one of those scales certainly starting with the minor blues and the pentatonic and just trying to follow the harmony and then maybe bringing in some of those other sounds from the Dorian and Mixolydian later on uh, for colour but you still got to be careful with those it's got to you know fit the chords and you know when the F7 or the, the G7 comes in you know some of those notes might not sound so good against those chords so it's about knowing how that sound fits the chord at that moment in time. As I said, this is the standard of the month on my Patreon page. There's the comping study, the backing track, and also the beginner solo and intermediate solo, which uses the scales that I've been using today and goes into some of the details and I break down you know, the rhythms I'm using and so forth. So if that's of interest, there's a link in my description. Please check that out. If you've got any questions, you leave them below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Until next time, you take care. <laughs>